forearm is vertical to the ground. As I'm holding the dumbbells, if I want to use light weights, let's get this out of the way right away. If I want to use light weights, and I'm pretty much you know, going for, doesn't matter, a set of eight, a set of 12, but if I'm gonna use light weights, and I'm not gonna get anywhere near failure, okay, then pretty much it's a waste of time. If you're interested in muscular growth, hypertrophy, it's not gonna happen. What am I doing right here today? Arnold presses. Arnold presses. You get it? I'll show you from the side before we put these dumbbells down. Arnold presses from here to there. Okay? It's not from here to here to here. This is not an Arnold press. Okay, this movement that you see in the gym all the time. That is not an Arnold press. Now, welcome back to Mr. America Hart. I'm John Hart, and I'm your host today. So I want to share with you my thoughts on the Arnold press and its effectiveness, okay? So there's a little bit of a dispute in the way that, or a little bit, I should say, I dispute or I disagree with the way that Arnold described it in the very beginning. He said that, his version of the Arnold Press, which was this one, with the rotation, like this on the way up, palms facing in, palms facing forward when they hit the top. His version of the Arnold Press, he claimed hit all three heads of the deltoid, the anterior, the medial, and the posterior head of the deltoid. It can't possibly be true. All three of them have different functions. However, what can be true is, that movement does involve a rotation. That movement does involve two different planes. Originally, you're starting here. It's being driven up vertically, but the elbow changes from here to out here near the top, right? So it rotates up like that. And when that happens, it does shift a little bit from the anterior deltoid to the posterior or the side delt. And that's good. We want to hit that as well. Not just the uh, anterior, but the, post the uh, medial head of the delt as well. So anterior, medial. The posterior in the back, the rear delt, now that guy unfortunately is not being hit directly. He is, he, that rear delt is in fact stabilizing along with the rotator cuffs and doing the business that they should to stabilize your arm to keep it from grinding up ahead uh, into your AC joint, okay? So the rotator cuff is doing the right job that it should be doing at that time. Now, why was I even showing you the movement right out the gate and how it's supposed to be done versus what you see in the gym with people going from here to here and then up they go and then down back here out and up they go that's not it what those people have done is they've looked at old pictures of arnold somewhere along the line somebody showed them or somebody prior to them who taught them the movement show, saw pictures of arnold doing the movement and they're still pictures meaning they're just photos of him holding the dumbbells here, and then second shot is here, and then third shot is all the way up at the top. So if you take all three pictures, it looks like it's a three-part movement, but it's not, okay? Now, how do I know all of this? My buddy Rick Drayson, before he passed away, I did his show many times um, on the Rick Drayson show, or Rick's Corner, it was called, and you can look that up on YouTube and find all the shows that I did with him at the time. But Rick himself was Arnold's training partner. Rick tells a story that during their shoulder workouts, they would in fact do Arnold presses. When they would do them was usually near the end of their workout and then they would, or after they did their heavy presses with a barbell, and then they would run the rack. They'd go from light to heavy. They'd start off with you know 30 pounds and they start 30 pounds. They'd fail, they'd put the weight down, they move to 40 pounds. Or they would do 10 reps, then move to 40 pounds, up to 50, 60, 70, 80. 80 pound Arnold presses, pretty good. And then they would go in reverse, 70, 60, 50, 40, all the way down to 30 again. So this is direct from Rick telling us, a man who was there, and a man who showed me how to do the exercise. Okay, so it's not a two-parter. There's a rotation, a corkscrew effect of your hand as you go up and come down. 
Now, I did a video earlier last year showing you what I considered to be a better way, or my way, that I did the Arnold Press in a seated version on a slightly a high incline. And I like that version a lot. I like the original Arnold version as well. I can do that one. And I've gotten good results with it. So, that bench version that I showed, you can look back. I'll put the link down below in the video description so you can see that video that I did back then. That video attracted a lot of comments, okay? Even to this day, it I read all the comments, by the way. So, uh, I don't respond to all of them, of course, but I do read them. And that video came up, man, the comments, some of you guys, really good stuff, okay? I really appreciate your input, hearing some of your experiences, you know, as I read the comments, it's pretty cool to see. Um, and then some people who just plain want to argue uh, because, I don't know, my blaspheming Arnold right here. I mean, to me, he always seemed like a nice guy and I don't think I was, you know, ever argumentative with him. I would see him down at World Gym specifically when it was in Marina del Rey and then in Venice and then in uh, uh, Santa Monica originally on Main Street. So. Arnold was always a nice guy. Did he do Arnold Presses the way that I just showed you? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And uh, so did his training partners. And so did the guys who knew how to do them. Just like that, with a good rotation. So that's not disputable. So we'll take that one off the shelf. As far as the comments go, as far as the comments go, and also the questions as far as, you know, things like from the side, you can see if I have dumbbells in my hand like this, my forearm is vertical to the ground. As I'm holding the dumbbells, if I want to use light weights, let's get this out of the way right away. If I want to use light weights, and I'm pretty much, you know, going for, doesn't matter, a set of eight, a set of 12, but if I'm going to use light weights, and I'm not going to get anywhere near failure, okay, then pretty much it's a waste of time. If you're interested in muscular growth, hypertrophy, it's not going to happen, okay, if I'm not going to train hard with using a decent amount of weight. So I was just doing these at the beginning of the video with 20 pound dumbbells and it was relatively easy. So if I'm going to use 20s in my workout, you, you bet you're behind. I could stand here with those 20s bolt upright all day long. You could pull them into me close and I could have really nice posture like this. But if I'm going to be holding, and to be honest, if I'm going to be holding 60, 70, 80 pounds, I've done them with 75 pound dumbbells and you're holding those things here. With 75 pounds in your hands, you are going to be leaning back slightly in the upper back like this. Okay, it has nothing to do with back flexibility. It has nothing to do with immobility or mobility in the upper back. Nothing. If you go ahead and you shoot a video of yourself doing and put it up on YouTube, we'll be happy to take a look at it, wherein you're holding 75 pound dumbbells or heavier or lighter, slightly lighter, but real weight, not 20s, that I'm just giving you examples with here. And by the way, even with the 20, I'm trying to show you how it actually looks, okay? As if I was using a heavy weight, okay? I'm modeling it for you. So 20 pounds, I'm still gonna hold like this with an arched upper back, even though I could stand bolt upright. I'm not gonna do that right now, but that's the explanation as to why. There's no mobility issues here. I'm not all locked up in my upper back. So if I held 75 pound dumbbells like this, I would naturally be leaning back to counter that weight. Otherwise, it's gonna pull me forward. I'm gonna fall forward. There is no pressing about to happen when you're holding 75 pound dumbbells if they're out here. You're at the top of a curl. You're doing biceps at that point. Your delts are not doing a thing and you're never gonna to get to press that weight overhead in an Arnold press. All right, so let's take that one off the shelf. Don't mean to be too argumentative here, but obviously there's a lot of misunderstandings because you don't shoot YouTube videos yourself and you don't know how to. So if you want to, please go ahead, model for us using those 75 pound dumbbells, how you stand bolt upright. It just doesn't happen. Okay. So that's another comment that I noticed seemed to be a sort of a favorite along the way. But having said all of that, the movement itself, and the way that Arnold and the boys used it and the way it was intended is actually really good. For the rotator cuffs, first of all, starting here, you have good, the elbows are here in front of you like this. This is a very safe, you know, you have external rotation of your rotator cuff 
and the dumbbells are held right in front of you, in front of your, your face or in front of your chin, elbows in front of you like this, this is, I mean, anatomically safe for your rotator cuffs. Driving up a weight initially like this is very safe versus way out there. That's not very safe for your rotator cuffs. Driving it up from here and passing that point and then having the elbows come out and up and then back in reverse, that motion it shifts the movement from a safe position to passing anything that could be dangerous out there in the bottom of a wide grip press, let's call it. You can tell I don't believe and I don't, I'm not happy with doing, nor do I teach wide grip barbell presses from way out here. Very hard on that ro rotator cuff to turn the arm all the way back like that at the bottom. But once you pass that point and you're here, at that point, you can press the weight up safely and it's going to go in a slight arc and the palm will be facing forward at the top. Very safe exercise. I highly recommend it. Try doing some of those Arnold presses for a good 8 to 12 repetitions using, again, I'm saying this from a bodybuilder's perspective. I've been a bodybuilder my entire adult life. So um, at this point, I'm going on four decades uh, of training and training others. Started when I was in my late teens and continued on until now. Yes, I'm in my mid-50s. So doing it this long, having done all those exercises, having still able to do exercises like squats, deadlift, bench press, uh, you know, overhead presses, all of those. Still able to do all of those. It's not just speaking from an authoritative position that I've trained me this way. I've trained hundreds of people this way over the course of the last 40 years and continue to to this day. So uh, I don't avoid certain movements unless there's a reason to avoid them. They may have prior joint injuries, things like that. But this movement in particular, wow, it's a pretty safe movement. I like doing it seated, as you'll see in my other video. I like doing it seated a lot, but the standing version is pretty good as well. And yes, from this position, you are leaning back just slightly with your chest stuck out and then blasting that weight up overhead. So Arnold presses, I love them. Stop doing this side to side motion, you know, with the dumbbells. This is not an Arnold press. This is the bastardized version of dumbbell presses based on I don't know what. So that's it for today. From my heart to you, John Hart. Hey, before you leave, off to my left, you're going to see a disc fly up around my head. That's the subscribe button for this channel. If you're liking the videos that I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button. But then also down below on your left, there's a thumbs up. If you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up, it helps the channel out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And that's it for today. Again, from my heart to you, I look forward to seeing you again. John Hart.